All right, guys. So today we're going to talk about properties of solutions, and we're going to learn how to read a solubility curve. Um, understanding how to read this graph is very important. Um, first off, um, being able to read and interpret graphs uh, is a very important skill to learn. Uh, second, you'll see this graph on a quiz. Third, you'll see this graph on a test. And fourth, you'll see this graph on the final. So um, understanding how to read this graph um, is very important. So basically the graph is a graph of different types of solutions. And in order to understand the graph, you have to understand some of the background information um, behind the graph. So first off, the solution process basically is we put a solute into a solvent and in most cases that solvent is going to be water and we want to get the amount of solute that we put into the solvent into the solution so there's a couple of ways we can go about speeding up this um, this process and the first one is very easy um, and it's essentially just stirring that solution um, you can put a little stir bar at the bottom of the solution and stir it up or you can s put a instrument into the solution and stir it manually um, by increasing temperature another is another way that we can increase um, the amount of time it takes or decrease the amount of time it takes to put something into solution so typically what happens is as we increase temperature we increase the amount of solute that can be taken up by that solution uh, this is going to be more evident when we look at the um, look at the graph um, a third way is particle size. All right, if we decrease the particle size, there's less surface area, so it's going to be easier to um, take up into that solution. And the last one is pressure. Now, pressure is a little different in terms of um, a solid solution. All right, but if we increase pressure, we're more likely to get a gas into solution. So a great example of this is with just a soda bottle. Um, if you look at a two liter bottle of soda, two liter bottle of soda contains carbon dioxide. So we put the cap on and when the cap is on, there's a great deal of pressure. If we take that cap off, all right, all the gas comes out of solution, all right, and causes that fizzing that we see at the top of a two liter bottle of soda or a one liter bottle of soda when we open the can. couple of key solution terms just so you can answer the questions that go with this. These terms are on your um, definition list so you do not have to write them down in your notes although the more you write something down the more likely you are to remember it so it's up to you whether you want to write these down. Basically the three main terms are going to which feed off of one another are going to be saturated solution, unsaturated solution, and supersaturated solution. All right, so saturated solution contains the maximum amount of solute dissolved in a solvent at a specific temperature. Now, this is temperature specific. All right, so that's the key part. An unsaturated solution is something which contains less than the maximum amount of a solute dissolved in a solvent at a specific temperature. And supersaturated solution, and I'll show you this in a demo on um, Monday, um, contains more than the maximum amount of solute dissolved in solute solvent. And the way we do this is we can raise the temperature and then cool that solution slowly. And as you'll see with the supersaturated solution, by adding one drop of or one more crystal um, at that room temp all the crystals in the solution will come out of solution and we have this big solid glob at the bottom. Um, solubility is what we're going to be looking at in terms of a graph we're going to be looking at a solubility curve. Now the solubility curve is going to show the different amounts of solute that can be dissolved in a given amount of solvent at a certain temperature. This should be a little bit more ex uh, explain, it, explain a little bit better when we get to the graph. Now miscible is a term and immiscible is the antonym of it. It just means mutually soluble. And what this means is like dissolves 
like. So polar molecules dissolve polar molecules. Nonpolar molecules dissolve nonpolar molecules. All right. So if we look at oil and water, oil is a nonpolar molecule, water is a polar molecule, hence they do not they are not mutually soluble. They're immiscible. But if we have something like water and vinegar, both are polar molecules, so they're mutually soluble. All right. So this is the reason why gasoline or oil floats on top of water um, when it rains. All right, or why in salad dressing the oil sits on top of the vinegar. So let's look at the solubility curve. Here's a standard solubility curve. All right, on the bottom x-axis we have temperature. So each one of these temperatures, all right, shows the solubility for each one of these compounds as we. Uh, um, and the uh, given amount of grams at that temperature which that solute is soluble in. Now on this graph you need to pay attention to the amount of water that's going to dissolve the specified number of grams of solute. In this case we only have 100 grams of water. 100 grams is about 100, is 100 milliliters at room temp. So the other thing that you need to look at is the legend here. Now the dotted lines are gases and the solid lines are solids. And there's a general trend that you'll see for gases. Gases, as we increase the temperature, become less soluble. And for the most part, with a few exceptions, for the most part, solids, as we, in the as we increase the temperature, become more soluble. So let's just look at one of these and we'll just look at um, sodium nitrate. All right, sodium nitrate's right here. So if I wanted to know the solubility of sodium nitrate at 50 degrees Celsius, I'd go on my y-axis to 50. I'd move my hand or pen all the way up till I find that sodium nitrate line and then I'd get the point where that line is at 50 degrees. So in this case, it's roughly 115 grams per 100 grams water. All right. So if I had 200 grams of water, I'm looking at 230 grams of solute being able to be dissolved in that water. Now, anything below the line, we have an unsaturated solution. Anything above the line, we have a supersaturated solution. Anything directly on the line is going to be saturated. All right. Now, if you go in your packet of fun, the next page, past the terms page, you'll see a solubility curve. And there are 10 questions attached to that solubility curve, which I want you to pay attention to. All right, and that's what you're going to complete today for an assignment and it will be checked first thing Monday in class. Now, with the assignment on numbers 2 and number 3, make sure you pay attention to the fact that we're dealing with 300 grams of water. All right. And So there's only 10 questions there. The other thing you should be working on this weekend is your cumulative review. That is going to be due Tuesday. And it's worth 5% of your overall grade. You don't want to blow that off. You want to maximize the amount of points you earn. And uh, that's all I have for you guys. So enjoy your weekend, and I will see you on Monday.